Now, you mentioned this one, uh, which is really important, and that's a quantity surveyor, and that's mm. that's obviously for um, investors. Yeah, it's not for PPLR. No, not for the owner occupiers. Yeah, um, just because you, you buy a property. What is a quantity surveyor though? Like, like to think people should we should tell they them. survey the quantity of assets in your property and what are they worth, and they they put in a uh, depreciation rate based on its age. So so they give you a depreciation schedule that you can give to your accountant, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so the reason why it is important is that you're maximizing your taxable return. No one likes paying tax. We all pay too much anyway. I don't know what they do with it in Australia. <laughs> um, we won't go down that route. <laughs> get, on, get on a soapbox and say, do everything you can to minimize your tax. It's smarter for it. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so that so quantity surveying to sort of surveys the property and gives you a depreciation schedule that you can use to give your account and then they can um, say my taxable my, I can reduce my my depreciation amount on this property is X. Therefore, if your prop your property is in um, cash flow positive, mm. then um, instead of you paying you know tax on that income, you might be able to write it off. Or if your property loses money. You can actually um, make sure that like that depreciation is getting taken off, so you, you lose less essentially. So it's a it's yeah. a tax play, but generally the reports are you know five hundred to nine hundred, similar to a um, building business yes. inspector. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of them guarantee that they'll get your their fee back within the first year of the um, the schedule. So you know properties like houses in Australia have a forty year shelf life. And, Accordance to the Australian Tax Office, not financial advice. Check with your accountant. Um, <laughs> but that's like a two point five percent depreciation per year, so um, that's pretty standard. But it's everything else, and having someone go in and inspect it, like you might have an updated aircon unit which you can you can write off, washing machine, multiple different things. Which so when you say two point five percent depreciation, so yes. if you've got a million dollar asset. We're looking at like twenty five grand a year that you can claim. Like, like this is not the round figure tax advice. If, but if yeah. the house, the, the building structure is a million dollars, um, yeah. So it costs you a million bucks a year, a million bucks to build, and it's brand new. And that's why a lot of so a million dollar build, not yeah. a million dollar property valuation. Correct. Yes, got so you. It doesn't take into account the land because that's not a uh, depreciable asset. Yeah. Uh, and that's why a lot of people get sucked into the house and land packages. And <clears throat> there's a strategy for everyone, right? Like um, house and land packages, I just you love don't, them, don't you? I don't touch. <laughs> um, generally, well, no offense to people that buy house and land packages. <laughs> look, like there's a time and place for it. I just, I just haven't really come across a client where, it's, in terms of investment, yeah. Well, there's a lot of supply risk with house and land packages because they get. Generally, the, the land releases are on the outskirts of the city, so mm -hmm. your distance to either CBDs or your, um, you know, the risk of another developer coming through and doing a thousand lot subdivision behind what you just bought, that's going to hinder your land growth because not available land. Yeah, like, yeah. like well, why would I go on, like a year later? Why would I pay eight hundred thousand dollars for your house when mm -hmm. I can go and buy the land and build a whole brand new house for eight hundred twenty, and then. Yeah, people are going to get sucked into these like savvy marketing campaigns. Like, this property will uh, appreciate X percent over every year, and you'll be able to appreciate twenty five grand a, a year because you've built a million dollar asset. And then people are like, "Oh, cool!" Because they generally, in the past, used to go to their accountant and say, "Yeah, financial planners are have been oh. really big on this, and the ASICs have cracked down on it, haven't yeah. they?" Yeah, yeah. And, and rightfully so. Recommendation recommendations from financial planners that will sell a product on behalf of the building and land package company and get a bit of a kickback. Yeah, so let's build that out. I used to work for a company as a, um, like when I was going up and doing my financial planning certificate license um, back in the day, uh, they specialized in, they do the statement of advice, do the financial plan, and then a part of that plan was obviously there was shares in there, but there was also investment properties and, um, then they'd have a separate company that would fulfill on the investment property uh, purchase, and it was always a house and land package. And with with, with that house and land package came a twenty five or thirty thousand dollar referral fee from the builder or developer. Cha ching. Yeah. So um, that's why I just don't I steer away from it because it's just it's a conflict of interest to take commissions from you know, a builder 
to incentivize you to advise a product. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd rather you know buy an established property that where the land value is greater than the asset value. Mm. Um, and if you were looking for tax depreciations, you can you know buy that established property, do a full renovation on it, and therefore you've got you know all the pre- new depreciable assets that you can write down over time, and it generally performs better than the house or land package. Um, so yeah. yeah, there are there are times where you know, people they they've been burnt um, where they they bought an established property and there was a there's just maintenance and they um, just didn't want to deal with you know hot water systems breaking every like once every ten years yeah it's pretty stressful once every ten years uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as, well I mean like once so my parents bought off the plan for the unit you're not you're not getting the land valuation. But my parents don't want to deal with the yard, yeah. and they don't want to deal with, uh, yeah, like yeah, that's a, that's an owner it's, a, it's an emotional, yeah, it emotional is. Purchase. And I think actually at that age, we we could talk about philosophies in different podcasts on like how, like what's good for us versus like PPOR and investing. Uh, we, we'll talk about reinvesting in another episode. That's a good one to speak to. But I think at that age, like effort, like you're 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 at retirement. You're not like trying to make. A ton of money. No, you should have made it by now. Yeah, and you've just like, I want to live somewhere freaking easy. Yeah, but that, that's why you go into the strategy side and seeing what your goals are, right? Like your yeah. parents, from memory, their goals were to you know travel the world and experience that, and you know you're not at home all the time, and then yeah, yard maintenance, pool maintenance, like it, yeah. it all adds up, and the efficiency of a unit for a lot of especially downsizes mm. is quite attractive mm. um, it just depends on where they're at in their financial position yeah so yeah there's always a strategy for everyone and it's going back to the house and land situation if you can find a house and land package in a really niche uh, project with you know sub 200 lots that are there you know like an infill area in a CBD that land is so scarce that mm. you know it will appreciate over time and then you've got you know good land growth they're just few and far between. Like, I, there's a couple that went through the Gold Coast, which you know, the, initially I didn't like because they backed onto a train line. Mm. Um, but then the other later stages of the release, you know, they weren't they weren't near there, and they've done really well. Um, so you can make money out of them. And obviously through COVID, everyone's coming out there saying they're so they're, they're great. And I, <laughs> I say to people, well, it was pretty hard to you know buy property and lose money over the last few in COVID, years. yeah and also i guess oh it's been great because i bought a that bought my house and land package at this price and the building costs more to build now so i got a good deal but it has nothing to do with the asset selection that's just inflation yeah there's a lot of building costs oh, man, we need to do a whole series on this because there's risks involved <laughs> like you can buy off the plan units and they don't have a builder in place like the uh, client i'm dealing with at the moment they yeah, I've heard stories like this too. Yeah, they, like they've been going back and forth for over a year trying to find a builder for the, the site, and they, you know, they're supposed to be finished construction in twenty twenty four, and they haven't even the kicked got out of the ground. The people out, yeah, of the building. It's, it's obviously a seventeen story, you know, beachfront apartment in Burley. It's 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 kind of really frustrating for those who are like they've got retirement plans, and now they're just sitting on their hands waiting. 